Look at the state of that. This is gonna be a struggle. And the man doesn't even wanna pay me what I'm asking for. Are you mad? Good morning, everybody. We are here at Euro Car Parts again. I'm not gonna lie to you. At this point, I feel like I'm betraying Paget. Uh, have a look at this, because obviously I've got no choice. It's the only one that's available, but. Regardless, I've got Paget, Textile, TMD, same stuff. Don't hate me for this. There you go. Look, there's a Brembo disc over there. Some people are going to be like, oh, yeah, Brembo disc on a Paget pad. Like, let's be honest, yeah? Does it really matter? Does it? Someone tell me that it does matter. And someone explain it down in the comment section down below. Tell me that it matters and how it matters, please. Let's go to the job. Well, I'd say regardless, it would be fine. But anyway, we are now on the first job. Brake pads in this for this Nissan Qashqai all around. As you can see right there, that is not in good condition anymore. Great lipping on it. And also, I believe it started making squeaking noises as well. Let's get this started. Seems like the customer needs more than just brakes. Cause have a look at this. Look at all that cracking on that tire. I feel like it's a bump, like a massive pothole away for this to explode. So yeah, we're gonna be letting them know about that as well. I'm gonna say this again. I do not recommend doing this if you're not changing the disc, but you can compress it by just doing this. are actually thick. As you can see right there, that hub is now ready to meet the new disc. For the front disc, we are actually using Brembo <laughs> with padded pads. Hurts me to say, but I actually prefer padded over Brembo. Not that Brembo is bad, but I just prefer using padded because I know what their quality is like. I don't want to speak bad about Brembo, but regardless, Brembo is good. All right, let's just say that. Anyway, let's fit this in and plug it in, just like that. You're probably wondering, oh, you didn't clean it, there's grease, there's grease on it. Well, I'll tell you, with Brembo's and Paget's, it's not required for you to clean it anyway, but it's up to you if you want to put brake cleaner on it, do it, why not? But with this one, there's already a coating on it and it's not grease based. So, we're gonna leave it at that. Let's not clean it, let's leave it as it is. And I'm gonna put the new pads in. First, important thing is to check this, see if it's moving correctly, and that's good. That means it's not seized in place. So, oh, the grease in there is actually decent, if anything. I'm just gonna add some anyway. Brake grease, so feel free to use rubber grease. Rubber grease is also good. So I just put a good amount in there. Not too much, just a good amount. This actually prevents your pads from squeaking because this thing can actually now freely move. So your slider can now freely move in and out, thus preventing the pads from sticking onto the disc. I mean, if uh, you guys have any tips, please feel free to put it down below. Nah. What I like to do as well is when I do this, I like to make sure that this is actually extended out and then I pop it back in just so that there's a springiness to it. Obviously, the rubber boot doesn't give any spring but this can be airtight at times and what happens is it creates a vacuum inside so 
what I tried to do, as you can see right there, look. What I tried to do is uh, keep it as extended as I can for when I'm putting it back in the rubber boot anyway, just so that it creates that spring effect look. Because once the pads is installed, when you press on the brake and then you let go, what happens is when you press in, it actually goes like this. It goes in and then it comes out. Obviously this is exaggeration of it, but it goes in and then it comes out a little bit. It goes in, comes out a little bit. And you want that from the sliders. So next thing you want to do is you want to be cleaning the runners as well. If you are not supplied with new runner, you can still use the old one if it's in good condition. Well, with this one, it is in good condition. So I'm just going to be cleaning it. So clean the runners because over time in factory, as you know, there's a certain tolerance here for the lobes. And if that does not meet it, say for example, for when there's dirt and rust and stuff like that on the runners, that will basically decrease the tolerance that is meant to be for the pads and that also prevents it from running on the slides no sorry on the runners freely so let's get that cleaned and make sure that we do our job right there you go and as you can see right there it is nice and clean now so we'll put this back on to install the pads you have to make sure that the grease that you're using is actually for brake pads and for brakes application, let's just say. So this one by TMD, Padded Textile, whatever you want to call them, right? This is metal free, which means that there's less chance of the grease actually attracting corrosion, if that makes sense. With using copper grease and stuff like that, what's going to happen is over time that copper grease will lose the grease and it will become just copper and that will actually seize onto your brake runners, best believe. So, here we go, let's put a smidge on the lobe, not a lot, just a tiny amount as such. Same again on the other side as well. So basically just the contact points anyway for where the thing is running, the pads. There you go, pop that in there. Okay, in there again. There's no need, again, there's no need for you to hammer the pads in. If you're hammering the pads in, there's something wrong. Right, so don't do that. Now, next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to clean the caliper. This one is going to be very dirty, let's just say. I've just noticed that. Okay, right, come with me. Have a look at this. Can you see this rubber boot right here? So that doesn't look like it's sitting correctly. It should be down here, like these ones here. So in this matter, what I'm going to do, it's so difficult sometimes on YouTube because there are people out there that will copy you and then they do it wrong, if that makes sense. So what I normally do with this one is I would put spray WD-40 on it and then I would actually clean it with a brake cleaner. But there is a way to get rid of this, this bubble right here, which is to basically poke your pick, not into the rubber boot, but make a separation in between the piston and the rubber boot, just so that the air comes out. It's up to you guys to figure that out, but I'm going to do it my way. I'm going to be poking it and yeah, you can use WD-40 if you want, but make sure that you clean it properly because you don't want WD-40 on your brakes. So let's get that popped. Right, now that everything is back in, you just have to make sure that everything is talked to specification. Rear big bolts, I believe. What did I talk it at? I think it was like 95 Newton meters or something stupid like that. The rear ones, it's always going to be 20 Newton meters. So as you can see, there's a smidge of grease in between the pads and the caliper there as well. That is just really to prevent the caliper from seizing onto the brake pads. It's not necessary, but it's a good practice, let's just say. So let's just talk the rear caliper bolts and uh, we'll move on to the next side. So for the next side, I don't really want to bore you guys. So I am going to be just running a time lapse on this one because it's a pretty straightforward job for myself anyway but yeah i'm gonna run a time lapse and then we're gonna move on to the rear because the rear is obviously a different ball game so yeah let's get to it Right, so we have just done both fronts. Now, 
we're gonna be moving on to the rear and I think this might be the squeak because if you have a look at this you look at the disc there perfectly fine no scoring obviously the lipping is there but the pads are definitely wearing thin and look at this look at this oh my god look at that that is not a good sign it looks like it's metal to metal already or just about shall i say just in time maybe we'll have a look well once we have investigated that we'll move on to that side but first let's get this one changed all right like what i just mentioned about these pins look at the state of that dry lubrication in there and that is for a reason and same with the bottom one as well so that is seized in place like look at this i can barely swing it and it doesn't even go in and out in and out so that and um, unfortunately has caused brake pads to basically seize in place and that is why it's squeaking <sighs> this is not good man this is gonna be a struggle oh, that is not coming out is it? my goodness me and that is exactly what i'm saying that this needs to be looked after properly they need to be cleaned and re-greased every time the brake is replaced oh my god everything is seized mate same story for the rear you want to clean it hub and also the surface of the brake shoes don't grind it down too much just freshen it up like so there you go now you've got fresh contact there clean this now there you go this is what I'm talking about look at that that's the sign of copper grease right there can you see that corrosion that green corrosion right there that is what copper grease corrosion looks like so please copper grease stop it I know yes it may not go wrong but it might so prevent it all right don't use it okay so I've been here for the longest time now. I actually had to I had to use my chisel because can you see where the rudder goes underneath of the runners? It's actually the fitting kit. Under the fitting kit, it was swollen due to rust. And I was like, okay, cool. Let me put the pads back in now. Then little do I know it was rusty underneath it and it swelled up a little bit. And like what I said earlier, the tolerances on this are great. I had to basically chisel away the rust from underneath. I've been here on this side for a good 45 minutes now and I'm sorry that I didn't get to record it the camera died so I've got it plugged in now so it's hardwired and as you can see earlier how it was very difficult to remove look at this look at that that's what you want when it starts to bounce back and forth back and forth so yeah let's get this put back in and we'll move on to the other side All right, so now we're moving on to the side that is supposed to give me. Oh dear, on the side that is supposed to give me the biggest problem. So hopefully I don't get stuck as much as I did on that side. Learned my lesson. So I'm gonna be double and triple checking that the tolerances are okay. So yeah, let's move on to the side. Bottom one is tight. Better than the other side. Let's just see. It's still tight though. Look at the difference between those two. Earlier it was just rust. And then, oh, put that in there, squeeze. Squeeze it in. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely swollen as well. There you go, there you go, there you go. Ah, look at that. There's your squealing noise. 
Same with that one, look, it's on the sensor already. Well, when I say sensor, this metal thing here, look. Oh yeah, John is not with us today, yet again. That is what I'm talking about right there. If it will focus, you can just about see it where the fitting kit goes. It's swollen, so I've just started cleaning that one. Now I've got to clean that one too. All of them. Bit annoying. Oh man, it's meant to be like 15 minutes each side, but you know, gotta do some extra sometimes. Look at that. All that rust coming off of it. Moment of truth. Alright, so that fits in nice. Ah, still doesn't fit. More grinding down then. Yeah, now you can see doing brakes is not as straightforward as it seems. So pay your mechanic. Pay them right, please. Just because you see it on YouTube that it takes two seconds, or well, I can edit it and make it look like I do it for two seconds. It's not. It's not two seconds. Because stuff like this is actually not in the book. You think our life is easy? It's not. I'll tell you that for free. Okay, that slid in. Nice. What about this side? Oh. Do that again. There you go. Now I can confidently say that slides in and out. See, there you go. You see? Do your job right. Stop forcing stuff in because it will just start squeaking. Then they will call you back. They'll complain, be like, you done a shit job on my car. That's what they'll be like. Trust me, I know these people. Well, not this customer anyway. This customer seems nice, but yeah. You get Karens and Johns in this industry. You gotta be careful. Look at this, right? If I was to close this, I don't have to force it, look. You see that? That is what I call a good job, mate. Don't need to force anything in. Alright everyone, so that is that Nissan Qashqai done. It was a little bit of a pain, let's just say, to do with all the seized sliding pins in the back and also the carrier being corroded, obviously underneath the fitting kit. It swell up, that's why I was struggling to put the disc in. So I had to basically clean it up and then like kind of like chisel it down just so that the pads can sit in properly so that the pads can slide in and out properly. If you don't do that, that's what will happen. It will start to seize and then so if that was to happen if, if if it doesn't go in properly try cleaning those things up and it should give you a good time after that but yeah anyway moving on to the next job now it's a diagnostic apparently the stop start light keeps coming on doesn't actually engage let's just say the start stop i hate to stop start anyway but yeah that's just my opinion so we're gonna go there and diagnose the issue so let's go and what's up everyone so yeah we're at the second job now i've actually started already because it was raining so yeah anyway as you can see here it's saying the pressure before turbine two that's what it's saying so i am literally checking it right now and it seems like from the looks of it because i've disconnected it already right here and i am testing the pressure with my brake leader you can do it as long as it's got a gauge but yeah that's the easiest thing that i could set up right now so i thought i'd check it anyway so that's the one before the turbine it's at 999 millibar which equates to 0 0.999 millibar if we were to pump it you can see right there pumping 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 absolutely no change on that pressure so i will pump it all the way to two bar and we'll see if this will update or not and for your information this is empty i'm currently at 1.4 bar so let's get it 1.4 1.4 1.4 1.4 1.4 
1.6 bar and as you can see right here it's moving but not the same as that like what i said obviously this is not the most accurate instrument but that's the same thing it's an indication if this pressure sensor actually works or not and from the looks of it it doesn't work so ah, we're gonna have to replace that i'm gonna inform the customer that customer is so that's all i'm gonna say wow wow he brought his car to three different garages none of them can figure it out i did okay i did and the man doesn't even want to pay me what i'm asking for what the actual oh my days that's so frustrating it's like oh yeah it's gonna be discounted this discount bruh just like what i was saying in the previous job pay your mechanic i may do you actually think i'm coming back here are you mad you must be smoking mate end of the day right guy doesn't want to pay and he only wants to pay my call out fee anyway i will take his money and never come back here i'll use that money to pay for the fuel whatever cool happy joy but this guy or any of his friends will never see me i tell you if i hear his name it's like oh this person no i'm not coming to you mate anyway this is where i'm gonna end this video frustrating one but it is what it is we have to move on in life there's gonna be better jobs than this we'll make the money back at some point anyway so thank you very much for watching and me and Tommy will see you on the next one. Peace.